A lot of Europeans doubt that there is enough space for Chinese civil society to flourish. And I think it's a legitimate point of view. At the same time, we know that there are reformers who want to give Chinese citizens more voice in public policy making and implementation. So by sharing European experiences through dialogue and cooperation, we can actively support Chinese civil society organizations. Seven organizations from Europe and China have embarked on a journey of collaboration. They will implement eight dialogues, two international conferences, and 16 participatory public policy initiatives. Civil Society Dialogue was held in Guangzhou from 23rd of August to 25th of August 2011. This dialogue was organized by the German Asia Foundation and the Institute for Civil Society at Sun Yat-sen University, two non-profit organizations from Europe and China. In this report, we will introduce the Institute for Civil Society and its founder, Zhu Jiangang. The Institute was established in 2004 with a focus on research, training, social experiments, and NGO development in southern China. Its target is to bring together different stakeholders, the government, business, and NGOs to solve social problems. In addition, ICS is also an incubator for grassroots NGOs in southern China. They also provide training program Huangpu Leadership for the leaders of this sector. When talking about ICS, one person we have to mention too. That is the founder of ICS, Professor Zhu Jiangang. We have a saying, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. I only met Zhu Jiangang two years ago when we jointly organized the workshop. Back then I was really curious what kind of people would come up, you know, come join uh, our workshop. Eventually I had really good discussions with Zhu Jiangang's associates. So last year, when we were applying for considerable funding for the EU-China Civil Society Dialogue, I immediately thought about Zhu Jiangang and the Institute for Civil Society. And I'm really pleased that they have become a key member in the consortium. Yes, yeah. working with ICS and um, uh, working with Zhu Jiangang, so this is uh, um, um, more or less a similar question. So um, um, I think I would like to make uh, three points on uh, working with uh, uh, ICS and with uh, Julian Gang. So um, uh, one point is the um, a cooperation between uh, academic research and uh, the civil society activities. So how he is working with the students and the institute is working with the students. And um, my second point um, would be this multi-stakeholder approach of the institute. I think this is uh, uh, very typical and very important for ICS. And um, a third point I would like to make, uh, this is um, the encouragement of internationalization. And I think this is a, a specific um, point which um, Julian Gang is making very, very often, very, very eager um, to encourage uh, this aspect. Uh, 
行动型的学者，呃，其实透过他对呃对中中国的草根 NGO 的一些参与的过程，他呃其实发现了这个呃中国的草根 NGO 是缺乏一套战略的，那他就从自己作为一个学者的这样的一个一个呃一个一个角度出发，来深入的思考这个中国草根草根 NGO 发展的这样一套的战略的问题。He, he will try his best to help the young children to go up. Um, for example, he founded one small state, one small fund named Martin Hall to support students to do some social practice and social service. Uh, as the director of ICS, Professor Zhu provides us a lot of uh, opportunities and freedom to join more activities such as the EU China Civil Society. Uh, and as a teacher of the university, uh, he also has a public lecture called Citizen Society and de Development. So, uh, all the students in the university, including me, uh, can join the lecture. Uh, uh, so, I was in the university, 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 we finally sat down with Zhu Jiangang and asked him about his vision of EU-China civil society relations. Actually, I, I think that if no such dialogue, the situation would be worse. You know, I couldn't say the dialogue make everything wonderful and everything's okay. It seems we built the really friendship with each other. Actually, this needs a long-term effort. So I just think that uh, dialogue is better than no dialogue. Uh, I also think that uh, dialogue is possible, it's potential to make some NGOs in Europe and NGOs in China can make friends. Uh, not easy, but uh, it, it is worth doing. So I think uh, dialogue is just the beginning. Uh, I am not very optimistic about the dialogue in the different civilization. I'm just thinking that we need we need to try to do something seems to impossible. It's difficult because it means that people should be, you know, keep from some uh, stereotype on each other and they should be patient to listen to each other and also they can understand each other. Uh, I think understanding is uh, more difficult than uh, just uh, say hello or just uh, or listen, just uh, uh, talk about themselves. You know, people need to really have some deep thinking of uh, other civilization and themselves. So that's not easy. That needs some training. You know, long-term training to people. Then they can understand. I mean, deeper in the heart. Um, so that's, I think, is a challenge. People, this is a time-consuming thing. You know, this is not only one conference, one workshop can finish this. It's just the beginning. But uh, we sh should ask ourselves if we really have the time, energy, to spend long-term uh, uh, understanding each other. If we would like to, if we are willing to. I think that's also the question to the people in modern eras, which very quick, very fast, even for, especially for the Chinese people, because we are in very, very high speed time. Uh, that's a, really a challenge for Chinese and Chinese people in this time. Uh, so I'm not optimistic, but I really think we need to do 